I have covered some weird movies on this show over the years, but today's movie is in the running for the weirdest of them all. Welcome to Sick Flicks, where I take a deep dive into the cinematic sewer to help you embrace your inner gore geek. I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, and today we're tackling Harry Bromley Davenport's strange and entertaining alien flick, Extro. Released in 1982, Extra wasn't exactly E.T. at the box office, but Davenport's film has gone on to become a cult classic over the years. No doubt thanks to the pervasive oddness that impacts every frame of the film. This one's got alien abductions, demonic toys, a dwarf mime, intergalactic erotica, and one of the wildest birth scenes in movie history. But does Extra deliver enough gore to earn the coveted 5 barf bag rating? Let's get to the gore and find out. Oh, and before we get started, today's video is sponsored by patron CZ Guy, Constantine Sakalariu, 20 bucks says I just murdered your last name, and Paul Rubino. If you'd like to help sponsor some videos and free me from the shackles of YouTube's tyranny, you'll find a link to my Patreon in the pinned comment and description below. I don't want to go all Sally Struthers here, but every dollar helps keep the show running when I'm hit with bogus copyright claims and community guidelines demonetizations. But hey, this isn't the PBS Pledge Week. You know what time it is. Let's get bloody. We fade in on these credits. New line. Now I'm bummed we never got an Extro vs. Freddy crossover. I don't know, this rejected boot up screen for the original Xbox looks pretty cool. Extro. I don't know what that means either, but it sounds badass. Space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise on its five-year mission to seek out interstellar movie credits. And here's future Bond girl Miriam Diabo making her screen debut. Hmm, Francis Coates? That sounds suspiciously like an Italian guy trying to convince you he's American. I don't know, was Harry Bromley Davenport one of John Tesh's stage names? Because this sounds like John Tesh music to me. Screenplay by Robert Smith? Holy shit, I love The Cure! I swear, these are not pseudonyms for Bruno Mattei, Claudio Fragasso, and Rosella Drudy. And House Establishing Shot. This was a movie about aliens. Young Damien Thorne is in serious training for the upcoming marathon season. I have no idea what's going on here now, but I'd like to take a moment to marvel at this special effect. At least I think it's an effect. Might just be the film caught on fire. Damn, he threw that stick so hard he created a rip in the space-time continuum. Must have smashed the sun right out of existence. Ah, oh, great. I've been this blinded by the light since that Manford Man song. I think these are just aliens here to remind Dad it's time for his annual anal probe. You should get one every year after you turn 50. And now it's time for football practice. Wait a minute. That looks like the Dance Academy. Did we just jump into Suspiria? Because I'd be okay with that. Back inside, what the hell? Is this kid's bed constructed entirely of Tinker Toys? Do kids even remember Tinker Toys? Christ, I'm old. Turns out, Dad went out to get a pack of smokes with those aliens and never came back. But he was taken away. He left us, now you know that. Well, Dad may be missing, Mom's already found a pretty sweet replacement in Dollar General Neil Gaiman here. What the hell? Did we just cut to a matte painting? Bob Ross is like, let's just add a happy little UFO here in the background. So, the aliens basically travel around in this flying triangle. Kinda looks like the thing they imprisoned General Zod and his pals in during Superman 2. Great, now the woods are on fire. Somewhere there's a very disappointed Smokey the Bear. And something's alive out here. Uncle Frank, is that you? Oh sweet Jesus, what the hell is that thing? It's like one of those cave monsters in The Descent. Apparently these folks had to drive through a Claudio Fergasso movie to get to Extro, judging by all this fog. They almost hit the monster thing, and holy hell, this might be the greatest British mullet ever. It's all tea with the queen in the front, shagging birds with Keith Richards in the back. I mean, just look at this dude. The double-breasted jacket says banker who lives on a golf course, but the mullet says dude who does keg stands and drives an IROC. Not gonna lie, this guy might be Rick Astley's dad. Anyway, he's getting tongued. Hell yeah. No, not like that, you pervs. I mean, this alien thing licked him. At any rate, you could say that was a real tongue twister. I will say it's good that his date is very supportive and compassionate. I mean, she just drives off and leaves him. Clearly she misses him though, because she's looking a little blue. Back at the house, we have a shot in Tarantino cam. This is some impressive footage, which is then followed by a house establishing shot. Not sure why, I mean, we were clearly just in the house. Oh, wait, this is a different house. So I guess that house establishing shot was sort of useful after all. It's nice that she's got her at-home waterboarding kit hooked up already. She may need it too, because the cameraman is creeping up on the house. I don't want to say the cast was ashamed of being in this movie, but man, even the dog looks embarrassed to be here. 
Anyway, someone's at the door. I'm sure it's not an alien. The dog, seeing his opportunity, makes his move to escape. So long, losers. She then heads back inside and sets the mood lighting to Suspiria. I'm sure this will help her relax. Then it basically turns into an Aerosmith song because Janie's got a gun. I will say it's nice that she's got a robe with a print similar to this chair. She's stealthy, like a ninja. Anyway, she does some exploring, but all she finds is this jump scare. Aw, oh, come on, honey. Give Scrotor a kiss. Damn, Scrotor is feeling frisky and clearly isn't big on foreplay because she's getting probed. Hell yeah. No, not like that. I mean, he's gonna ram his ovipositor down her throat. Wait, that still sounds dirty. I'm not gonna lie. This is kind of like close encounters of the pervy kind. Oh god, I hope that's not his O-face. And from intergalactic erotica, straight to aimless driving. Seriously, I'm starting to worry this kid's bed doubles as a bondage station. What's with the ropes? Looks like Junior's had a rough night. He's a bloody mess, and that's not just a British colloquialism. Then Doctor Who shows up to treat him. All British doctors are Doctor Who, right? I think I read that somewhere. Anyway, it looks like this kid is sleeping in a squat rack. It's just still better than doing curls in one. After a whole lot of jibber-jabber, this happens. Tony simply misses his father. He doesn't need thousands of expensive psychiatrists. Only little time and care. <laughs> Could you say that again? Maybe in English this time? Sounds like she's got a bunch of marbles in her mouth. Back at the other house, our lady is basking in the afterglow. Oh, Scrotor, that was out of this world. The dog, meanwhile, is eating what's left of E.T. <laughs> I'm sure that's fine. And don't look now, but I think she's got a baby Scrotor in the oven. Man, you could say she's blowing up. I'm guessing we're about to get the gender reveal. Um, yeah, she just gave birth to a fully grown man, which suddenly puts the phrase man-child in a whole new light. Just look at him chewing through that umbilical cord. I bet I'll miss it later. You know, because he was pretty attached to it. Hey, wait, is that the dad who got abducted earlier? Holy shit, this movie is weird. Back at home, everyone's late for football practice. Turns out her alien hubby is calling. Hey, babe, it's me. You're not gonna believe what's happened. Clearly, this is a Fergasso phone because there's fog coming out of it. You could say this was a real hotline. The good news is he's figured out a life hack for the carpool lane. Just put a corpse in the passenger seat. Problem solved. And building establishing shot. I'd like to propose a toast. Then Neil Gaiman has to tell this chick she's late for football practice. This kid's terrible bowl cut sure does make him look an awful lot like a young horror geek. If his hair was orange, he could be my twin. And now he's off playing with his snake. Hell yeah. No, not like that, you pervs. I mean his pet snake. Oh sweet, it's Andy Warhol. A lot of big stars in this movie. And here's Alien Dad, doing his best Napoleon impersonation. While that's going on, some rando finds the dead woman in the Volvo. She clearly spilled her guts. Meanwhile, Mariam Dabo is on the phone with the director. Listen, Harry, could you tell me what I'm supposed to be doing in this movie, besides showing my boobs? Look, I have no idea what's going on here, but it's pretty legendary. Mom heads off to pick up the kid, but he's not there. His father picked him up. Wonder if he picked him up in his flying saucer. Also, the 80s were wild. Anyone could just wander in and pick up a kid at school. Try that nowadays and see how quickly you get arrested. She does eventually find them and she gives Alien Dad a heapin' helpin' of pimp hand. Anyway, they head home and he's gonna tell her about his abduction. Hopefully he leaves out the anal probing part. Felt good. TMI, man. Oh, great, Neil Gaiman's here too. I feel like this might turn into a gender swap three's company. Come and knock on our door. Ah, oh, sweet, they're playing Connect Four. Very sneaky, sis. Neil tries to assert alpha dominance, but he gets shut down. Joe, would you like a drink? Awkward. That doesn't stop him, though. Look, Sam, I'm the daddy now. Later on, Alien Dad is hungry. Mmm, snake egg omelet. This is excellent. After catching his dad eating the eggs, Tony makes a break for it in the elevator. Kids really go on places, mostly just to a different floor. And the snake is out for revenge, too. Must have studied at Hogwarts because it's slithering right out of here. Meanwhile, Alien Dad is hunting for the kid. Come out, I promise I won't ram my ovipositor down your throat and lay eggs in your chest. Scout's honor. Action music courtesy of your old Casio keyboard. <laughs> then we get a Fulci eye close up. Drink. Oh, what the hell is this? Dad's drinking him like a juice box. You promise no ovipositor? I've watched a lot of Dr. Pimple Popper, but I've never seen someone remove a lipoma like this. Back at home, Tony apparently has psychic powers. 
Trumpy, you can do stupid things. At dinner that night, things get contentious. So I have a little announcement I'd like to make. I hope it's that we're getting Sandman season two. Rachel and I are gonna get married. Not gonna lie, that's not nearly as exciting. Alien Dad is not taking the news well. Man, I sure hope that wasn't the good J&B. Well, all things considered, I think that went okay. If you think hard about something, you can make it happen. Ah, oh, great. This is turning into a The Secret seminar, isn't it? Let's ask Lance Henriksen what he thinks about this. That's the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard. <laughs> hey, remember the snake? Yeah, he's still in this movie. Looks like he's about to drop in for dinner. Well, he was in this movie, but Granny Warhol here puts an end to that. Later that night, we get a little something for the ladies. Ooh, take it off, alien dad. Dude looks like he's ready for some close encounters of the sexy kind. Rawr. But since his wife doesn't want to hook up, he decides to get high on propane. He wasn't sure how much he needed to get high. It took a lot of gas work to figure it out. Back in the bedroom, I can't believe it's not Neil Gaiman is about to take Mom on a one-way trip to the Dreaming. Meanwhile, over in the kids' room, he's basically a romantic song. You know, because he's talking in his sleep. But that's interrupted by football practice. Then shit gets really weird because Tyrion Lannister shows up. And if that weren't weird enough, now we've got live action G.I. Joe. God damn, this movie is strange. I don't know, this guy's performance feels a little stiff. Probably because he's made of plastic. Anyway, I can't take this thing seriously. It's more G.I. joke than G.I. Joe. I mean, this action figure is kind of dull. Doesn't seem to have very many points of articulation. And then he stabs her. You know what they say, no one is half the battle. The other half is violence. After all that action, I think we need a breather. So there's a conveniently placed building establishing shot here. Inside, Neil Gaiman's about to head out. I bet he's going to Neverwhere. And apparently he also owns a bird. Alien Dad is making progress with the missus, but she finds out about his side chick. Well, I've never seen it before. Yes, maintain plausible deniability. Well, maybe it isn't my jacket. Oh yeah, the maybe it isn't my jacket gambit always works. Then she heads off to deliver some bad news to Neil Gaiman. We're going to the cottage. Who? Well, me and Sam. I'm sure this is fine. I mean, it's totally normal for your girlfriend to take a trip to a cottage with her old flame. Over at the house, Tony and the babysitter are playing hide and seek, but it looks like someone is clowning around. Clearly, this is no laughing matter. It's a real drag. Man, remember when this movie was about aliens? Those were good times. Anyway, she's about to get hammered. Man, she's super vascular. Probably all the trend and pre-workout. At any rate, this is going to be great practice for when he gets his first blow-up doll in a few years. Out in the country, Discount Claire lures in her next victim for Uncle Frank. And back at the house, this is happening. I had some tank jokes here, but I want to get off track. And apparently, Spider-Man has been here judging by all this webbing. Definitely a sticky situation. But our hero isn't giving up. Well, maybe he is. I mean, he is throwing in the towel here. Then he flees right into Black Panther. I had no idea Extra was part of the MCU, but here's your proof. Over in the woods, Alien Dad is ready to shoot his shot. Hey, is that a proboscis, or are you just happy to see me? Later that night, Alien Dad has come down with leprosy or something. Dude's <laughs> falling to pieces like he's a Patsy Cline song. Not gonna lie, I have no idea what any of this clown shit has to do with aliens, but it's weird enough that I don't even care. Over in the bathroom, it looks like our babysitter is about to break out of her chrysalis. <laughs> I bet she's gonna be a real social butterfly. Um, Luigi Cosi is gonna need these eggs for his contamination shoot when you guys are done with them. The super heads up to investigate, but the bad news is he's about to be murdered by a Simon Electronic handheld game. <laughs> That's a first for this show. Then the movie's about to get shitty, because Neil Gaiman's cleaning out the birdcage. Members Mark, Helena Bonham Carter, calls him to go check up on the kid, then he realizes the picture of Alien Dad's side piece is the dead girl from the car. <laughs> what a coincidence. But before he can call back, Alien Dad melts the phone lines. You can say this dude has the hot hand. Then he's like, oh honey, it's time for your probing. They do the deed, but unfortunately he's turned into a Jackson Pollock painting. I'm not sure this is what they meant about body painting in the bedroom. She tries to comfort him, but all she gets for efforts is the taste of his pimp hand. Then he bails. Sorry, gotta finish getting ready for the KISS concert. Honestly, this is how my shins look after heavy deadlifts. Oh yeah, dude definitely spent too much time in the sun. He's peeling. While Neil heads inside, Tony's wandering around in the woods. I feel like we're about to walk right into the opening scenes of Pod People. And shit, things are getting pretty Cronenbergian now. 
Oh, yeah, definitely the start of pod people. Someone call the cops. But hey, Elliot Dad is looking great. This is what happens to me anytime someone plays New Country in my vicinity. Blood just streams out of my ears and I scream myself hoarse. Well, I guess we're never getting another book in the American Gods universe. Mom heads off in pursuit and it looks like she's wandered into an early X-Files episode. Oh, yeah, definitely like a season one episode here. Oh, man, Dad looks fantastic. And the kid looks great, too. If I were mom, I'd probably be like, yeah, it's cool. He's all yours now. Step into the light, Carol Ann. Wow, look at these special effects. That's movie magic happening right before your eyes. Then they're gone. Poochie and Tony died on the way back to their home planet. And mom's like, well, hubby and kid are gone. Boyfriend is dead. It's finally time for me to shine. Except there's a swerve ending coming. Wait for it. Ah, <laughs> yeah, there it is. She's got a whole brood of this annoying kid now. And ending card. So wait, this whole thing was basically just an intergalactic custody battle? Dad came back for his kid? It's like Kramer versus Kramer with more goo and probing. So what have we learned from Extro? Well, for starters, it was apparently really easy to get drugs and make a movie in the early 1980s. Extro remains one of the weirdest movies I've ever seen. It starts off like an alien film, but then it morphs into this weird indescribable thing with a killer clown, a black panther, mutating corpses, and assorted other weirdness. I'm not gonna lie, I love it. Oh, and this seems like a good time to point out that there are multiple versions of Extra out there, so if you're thinking of an ending where there was a final gore scene, that was a different version and not the one I covered. But enough about that. Can Extra probe enough humans to earn a coveted five barf bag rating? Let's go to the gore card! In terms of gross anatomy, Extra is pretty out there. We're treated to weird lesions, body transformations, death by Simon, bleeding ears, and that unforgettable birth scene. The effects are pretty gooey, and there's more than enough here to give Extra a respectable three barf bag rating. This is a sick little flick. Looking for more terror from Beyond the Stars? Then be sure to check out my review of Galaxy of Terror. You'll find a link here on the screen. I'll meet you over there. Until next time, I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, bringing you all the splatter that matters.